So today I'm going to talk about two things. Uh, one is toroidal flowers. Um, we've got helical torus flowers and there's uh, anti-spin toroidal flowers. Uh, I'll go more into the difference between the two uh, later. Um, and then also I'll be talking about toroidal caps and it's very similar if not the same thing to toroidal flowers. Uh, it's just, you know, a cap is half of a flower. Anyway, so I'm very excited to vlog about this today. Um, and uh, let's do it! Okay, so all this stuff is based on uh, toruses or helical torus, or what I call coil bending uh, type moves. Drax did a great video explaining uh, helical torus and toroidal flowers uh, type stuff. I'll post a link to Drex's video in the, uh, the doobly-doo. But also at Fall Wildfire, Charlie taught a class. It was actually on plane control, but he went over a lot of 3D stuff and explained toroidal uh, motions in a really interesting way that I've never heard before. He talked about a spline, which is not just a clever portmanteau for space-time. He used spline to refer to an object that basically looks different standing still than it does over a period of time. So a spinning poi uh, at one point in time is a ball on a string, right? But over time, if you can think about this fourth dimensionally, Marty, it becomes a disc, okay? So over time, it traces the shape of a disc. I happen to have a disc right here uh, because I'm in a gym. This weighs five pounds, and for those of you in metric land, that's not a lot of weight. So we have our disc. So you can take this object and trace it through space, right? In the case of a torus or a helical torus, what we're doing is, is we're, we're tracing this through a, uh, a circle, right? It's going like that, okay? And if you look at it from the side, it looks like a staff, right? And so the, the terminology for anti-spin toroidal flower actually comes from staff. So like if you look at this thing as if it was a staff, an anti-spin for staff looks like this, right? Okay, that's the same thing the spine does uh, when it anti-spin. It goes like this, right? So that's what your poi is doing, okay? Uh, Drex uses the example of a person walking on the moon as it orbits the Earth, uh, but it's it's a similar, it's the same concept, just explained in a different way. I actually look at it in another way. I look at it in terms of uh, coils. I don't know if this is gonna work, but uh, so I have a coil here, right? The way I look at it, uh, each coil has 360 degrees of opportunity where you can bend it. Okay, so you can bend it. So we can bend these this way, right? We can bend these this way this way, okay, this way, all right. Uh, if you look at two discs, say you're, you're going from here to here, right? So this is your start, this is your finish. To get from here to here, you can bend either at the bottom here, so in which case you would, you would bend like that, or you can bend at the top. So you would have this guy, and then you'd have this guy down here, right? And then to get from one to the other, you would have this guy, okay? That's the anti-spin. Okay, this is starting to get really heavy. If you are of a certain age, you might remember when telephones used to be connected to the wall with a wire, which was really annoying. Oftentimes this wire was, was a coiled wire, and then it would get all these kinks in it that you can't untwist, it's really annoying. Thankfully, phones aren't connected to the wall with wires anymore. But if you remember that, that kink in the telephone cord, that's the anti-spin uh, toroidal flower path. For, for all the stuff I'm going to do today, it's going to be in four coils, or res four, as, uh, as Charlie would say. So I would go from this coil here, to that coil there, to that coil there, to that coil there, and then back down. And the side, it looks like this. Okay. 
So the point here is that the poi has a momentum. So if we consider the, the poi spinning this way, okay? When it gets to here, it's gonna have a momentum this way, okay? Right? And if we're gonna go to this point, to this coil here, they hinge on, on this point, right? So then this is the next one. Uh, the poi has this momentum starting this one this way, so it's gonna go around this circle this way, okay? And so then if we're gonna go here, uh, when it comes to that hinge, it's gonna have momentum that way, and it's gonna go around this circle that way. So it always keeps its momentum from one coil to the next. This, from here to here, would be the inside points. If you hinge here to get to this point, so let's say our, our uh, poi is going this way, it has momentum this way, okay? So it's gonna come out and then back in to this one, and so now it's gonna go in around this circle this way. Okay? So it always keeps its tangential momentum, and, and that's why it switches through the different planes so fast and so smoothly. Yeah. Okay, so I've been doing these with the arms moving in the orthogonal circle in split opposite. So the arms move in split opposite, right? Very familiar. Well, I'll start with the helical torus one. So each hand is doing this, okay? Okay, so the anti-spin one, to get from this coil to this coil, I'm going to break here, go outside, right, and then back in to this coil over here. Now from here, it goes out and into this one. Okay? Now here, it's coming back towards me at the far point, so it's going to go back and then into this one. Basically, you're looking for a half a circle from each coil, the, the, the far point on the coil to the far point on the next coil. You're looking for a, a half circle to connect those. Okay? And again, the hands are going to go split opposite. Obviously, you can do these in lots of other different arm timings, all of the other different arm timings, I think. The really tricky parts are what you do with your arms, because you get in these situations where your arms have to cross each other, and poi are going to cross each other too, and, and, and you just basically have to find a way to avoid that from happening. So yeah, so you can do all the other arm timings and directions. You can also do quarter time. That gets really hairy with where your arms cross. Oh, also, the other variation you can play around with that mixes things up is uh, basically when, it, when the poi are apart, you're, they're, they're basically in lockout, right? They can either be coming together in the middle, right? Or they can be coming apart in the middle, okay? Uh, which is confusing when it comes to terminology because when they're coming together in the middle, that means they're actually going opposite directions. And where, when they're coming apart in the middle, that means they're actually going same direction. So I, you know, I don't worry too much about that. Um, I, I, I just focus on whether, you know, which direction they're going when the change is going to happen. Okay, so that's either when they're in the middle or when they're on outsides. So if you if you're going opposites or same direction, that changes which direction uh, the poi have momentum in. Uh, it, it gets all wild and crazy, but it's, it's uh, super happy fun times. Okay, so caps, all the same stuff applies. The only thing is that you're only doing half a circle. So instead of doing it in wall plane, how did that happen? There we go. So instead of doing it in wall plane, you can actually do it like right in front of you. So, so with the circles like right here. So the same rules apply. Uh, with the, the helical torus, they're going to change when they're in the middle, okay? So right here, right? And then, come on, and then apart, okay? So,
Okay, so you might have noticed that there's this really hinky part when the poi go horizontal, okay? Because in a calf, your, your arms are going to go past each other like that, right? Uh, but in the, uh, in the toroidal flowers, when they, when they go past each other like that, they go into horizontal, right? And then when they're in horizontal, they're in same time, same direction, which makes it really tricky to get them to cross without hitting each other. So you basically have to do a kind of corkscrew in same time, same direction. Because if you think about a corkscrew, all it is is you're switching which hand is on top. So left hand on top, right hand on top, left hand on top, right hand on top, right? So in these toroidal flowers, there's this moment where, where the poi go into same time, same direction and horizontal, and you have to switch which hand is on top, right? Anyway, it's tricky, but uh, that's, that's kind of uh, the crux of the, the move uh, right there. Okay, so the cap can also be done in anti-spin, and that looks like this. Ah. And again, basically when you're at the, the, the outside points, that's where you change, right? So outside, change. Outside change. If we think of the, the analog, the 2D analog to this cap, it's extension versus anti-spin, right? This cap in 2D goes from extension to anti-spin. So what that looks like with our spine here is extension to anti-spin. Extension to anti-spin. Extension anti-spin. And if you recall, our extension analog here is the uh, helical torus. So that's our extension. So we can do this switching each time our arms go past from helical torus to anti-spin, uh, just like the 2D cap. Okay? So we go helical and then back anti-spin, anti-spin, okay? Helical, anti-spin, Helical, anti-spin, helical, anti-spin, ah! But one really cool thing about these toroidal flowers is that you don't have to go half a circle to switch. You can do it at every quarter circle because there's the, uh, the, the poi does a, a circle there and you can switch at any point in the circle to the next coil. So what that looks like with our splime is you can go helical a quarter turn and then anti-spin for the, the next quarter, okay? And you can expand this through the whole circle so you can alternate. You can go uh, helical, anti-spin, helical, anti-spin, helical, anti-spin, helical, anti-spin. Yeah, so you can switch at every coil. All right, so there's this other variation that I, I've worked out where you switch at each 90 degree coil. I start actually in opposites here. And then I go anti-spin, and then helical. Okay, so it looks like this. And from the front, it looks like this. <laughs> okay, uh, one last dumb thing that I kind of played around with with these things. When you get into these uh, horizontal side bits here, uh, you're in same time, same direction. So you can do a nice little pirouette and then go back into your, uh, into your toroidal flower. Ah, that's a cute little thing. Anyway. Okay, I think that about wraps it up. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this vlog updates usually on prime numbered Saturdays. I miss them here and there, but uh, I, I, I try to update these on uh, prime numbered Saturdays. Uh, and I think the AC is just about to kick on, so my sound is about to go crappy. So thanks for watching. Bye.